Now we want to create two morph targets which we can also link to the motion of our jellyfish. To do this we will uh, select the body of our um, object, right click, character, character tags and the pose morph. So in the pose morph tags you have a lot of options and the one that we want to use is points. So just uh, click on points and this will bring up this um, window here. You have your base pose which is the state right now and you have a first pose which is uh, generated by Cinema 4D for you. So we will rename it to in and we will create a second one which we call out. So here we will define how our jellyfish should look like when it sucks uh, water in the body and here we will define how it should look like when it pushes out the water. So let's first of all take a look at the in movement. So I will switch to the side view, click on point mode and I will take the rectangle selection, make sure only select visible elements is unchecked so that we also select the points which are on the back side of our object and I will um, use the soft selection. So when this is not checked and you select a bunch of points and move them around, you get this hard edge here. And if you um, check soft selection, I've set it to a radius of 30 centimeters. When you move it around like this, um, you will have something like a selection fall off. So it will select those points and then here's a fall off. So those points which are above the selected points will also be affected. So for this movement, when the um, jellyfish sucks the water in, I will scale this part up. So I will go back to the perspective view, take the scaling tool, and just scale those two axes here. If I go on this uh, green triangle, and scale it upwards, it looks like this. And here I can decide how much I want to scale it, maybe something like this should should look cool. So around the size of our controller circle maybe. Let's switch back to the side view, push it upwards a little bit, maybe like this, yeah, this, this could work. Um, and if we now click on our um, morph target tag again, you see that we have a strength slider here. So with uh, our pose in selected, uh, if I change it, this slider here, you see this would be with the movement um, when the water goes in. So it looks like, like uh, the jellyfish is breathing. This is very good, like this. Okay, then we click on out, which is the third point here in the list. Um, the points are still selected, this is good. And then I will uh, again switch to the scaling um, option, the scaling tool, sorry. Go to the perspective view and scale it down like this maybe. Oh, maybe. Maybe like this. And stretch it downwards. Maybe, yeah, maybe something like this could be nice. I will decrease the radius of my soft selection a bit and scale it even more. Maybe something like this would be cool. So if we take a look from the side again, click on our um, morph target tag and use this one. Now it pushes out the water. This should work. So when we've done this, we can go back to the normal mode and take our live selection tool and click again on our morph target um, tag and we can switch the mode from edit to animate. And this will bring up this interface here where we have our two sliders and we can control it here. So what we now want to do is we want to link those values to the movement of our, um, of our jellyfish. So when it sucks in the water, this uh, blend shape should come in like this. It spreads out, brings in the water and then it pushes out the water. So this one comes in and this one goes down. <laughs> so now we have our movement here and we simply need to address those values with our Expresso. So I will zoom out a bit like this, bring up our Expresso window and create two range mappers. 
and we can rename them. So this is the range mapper in, and this one is the range mapper out. So we have a better overview over this one here. In and out, we will connect the position of our master controller and maybe select them both at once. We know that our input range is a real, just user defined, and the output range should be percent because um, our morph targets are driven in percent. And under the parameters tab, if we take a look at this one here, um, our input lower is zero, the input upper is 50, so this is our um, one motion cycle. Input lower is zero and input upper is 100, so this is nice. And we bring in the morph target tag. So just drag it in and create two input ports, tag properties, out strength. So this is the morph target out and we want to um, drive the strength of it. And the same goes for in, in strength. We'll just uh, change the position in here. And now I can connect the in and the out. And because the motion repeats over time again and again, we have to say, we have to check here modulo that our function will yeah repeat itself over time. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. So if I now hit play, you see that nothing really uh, works very good because both both of them are working um, at once right now, both morph targets. So that's not what we need. So I will create some curves. So I'll check the range mapper in. Take a look at the parameters and here we have our curve. So right now there's not a curve, so we have a linear line here. So it blends in from 0% to 100. But what we basically want is that our first uh, morph target, the in, uh, should uh, take place maybe in, so this is our whole, um, our whole uh, motions uh, cycle. So maybe we want the in sucking part in this area here. So I will create a curve for this one, maybe like this. So now we see that something happens. So only in the first few centimeters of our movement, this um, blend shape, the morph in, will be blended in and blend out again. And then we will take our second range mapper and create a second curve, which will be at the end of our uh, motion cycle, something like this. And now you can see that we can that we have both motions here, and now we can easily adjust the motion that it looks good. So let's take a look at it. So we see that there is a step in between because they are not overlapping enough. So I will blend in the second morph earlier. This is better. Maybe it should stay longer. Yeah, I like it. And I will take a look at my first morph again and maybe blend it out for a longer time. Something like this. And I think it can suck in earlier. Something like this maybe. So you see that you can spend a lot of time here by tweaking these curves. Uh, this looks nice over here. So if we just uh, make the jellyfish visible and make our controller invisible, we can see how it looks without the ring. This is quite a nice movement. Maybe we should adjust it a little bit more. The curve over here. And the cool thing is that you control the whole movement just with these two curves. So um, you can change it very easy and very interactively. You can just uh, let it run without changing any keyframes and push them around. We just have a linear movement from the bottom to the top. And I think right now we have a nice movement over here. Maybe it's a little bit too fast, the first one. So blend it in longer. 
Bring it to the side. Yeah, I like this one. So in this lesson, we learned how we can make um, morph targets and drive them with Expresso. So we have the whole movement of our main body uh, defined over curves. And we will later build a user interface where we have all those three curves and change the movement of the whole jellyfish with a few clicks.